In this video, we'll be taking a look at some graph basics. We have, of course, seen the graph before in the earlier course when we were building our rig. Um, if I select one of these guys and I open up the Apex network view, we can see the, the graph that is the result of this node. And as I go down these nodes, you can see that the graph is being updated. Uh, but this view really is just a view. It's not a way for us to manipulate the graph. We can uh, move these nodes around if we want to uh, have a look at something more closely. But if I click away on something else, and then I come back to that node, it will have relayed out these nodes. Because again, we're not able to edit this. In fact, if I select one of these nodes and hit delete, I'm given a permission denied error because I'm not editing this graph, I'm simply viewing it. One way that we can uh, view this graph with a little bit more control is if we unpack, where is the unpack? If we unpack the folder, We say dot rig. Now again, we can't edit this, but what we can do is use a layout graph uh, to spread these out a little bit. So if we needed to go in here and look and see just what was being connected to what, um, we could use the layout graph node. And this allows us even to um, specify nodes. If we only wanted it to lay out the nodes that had front uh, star, anything with front, you can see that just those nodes are being laid out by this node. So that's all well and good, but we've come here to edit this graph. So how do we do that? Well, there is an edit graph node. And if we feed that in, we can see that this layout graph operation that we've performed is preserved in the edit graph. It hasn't snapped back to that original layout. And in the edit graph, we can do anything we want. We can delete these nodes, we can lay them out again, uh, whatever we want. But what is this node doing? And why did we need to unpack before we got to this edit graph state? Well, the reason is that the output of these nodes isn't just the graph, it's everything. In fact, we have four pack geometries here and we can look at that with the rig tree. Open this up. So we not only have our base rig, but we also have our base skeleton, the base shape, which is our mesh, and we have that guide skeleton that we created. So when looking at the um, Apex network view, it knows to kind of go in and look at that graph, um, but it's not really that intelligent about it. If we want to do any kind of real manipulation, we need to unpack that folder. And we also need to be sure about the extract pattern that we use. If we just use the default, you could see that a whole bunch of new nodes were created up here. If we drag some of these out, we can see what they are. And there's dozens of them all on top of each other. Well, we can lay out the graph. That will spread things out a bit. Let me just put that back to default. So you can see here is our rig, but then we have all these nodes. So what are all these? Well, uh, they are the, go back to this guy here. They're the base rig, but also the base skeleton, the base shape and the guide skeleton. And so that's why this is so, I have to lay that out again. 
That's why this is so cluttered. And if you have a very heavy geometry, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of nodes in here. So it's really quite important uh, when you unpack your, your rig um, to specify that you want the rig. And that will get rid of all these nodes and leave you with just the rig that you want. And then you can lay it out if you need to, um, and then feed that into the edit graph. So the edit graph obviously allows us to uh, make permanent changes to this graph. We can add nodes. Um, but what else is going on here? Well, first of all, we should realize that this is stashing some geometry. So if I add um, nodes here, those nodes are going to be uh, stored as points and the connections between those nodes are going to be stored as primitive lines. So this edit graph needs a way of, of storing that information. So we have a geometry stash here. And we can reset it. Uh, if we've added nodes and then changed our mind and we just want to get rid of it, we can reset and it will go back to um, what its input is. Uh, there's some error handling there as well. And then there's these two subfolders. Um, general scripts and rigging scripts. I think for the most part, um, as you're beginning to learn uh, a little bit more about uh, Apex Graph and, and beginning to modify your rigs a little bit, um, you don't really need to know much about these. These are kind of convenience things. Uh, the documentation will list what each of these does. But just as an example, if I put down just an Apex edit graph on its own, you can see that there's no network here. But if I go to these rigging script, and we have a skeleton up here from our asset. So let's just try and import that FX, KinFX skeleton and see what happens. So if I click that button, it will give me a operator chooser. I can go in to this SOP, and way down here is a null called skeleton. And that was the collection of all the uh, joint creation and modification that I did into that node there. So if I accept this, we get a bunch of nodes. And if we look at them, we'll recognize that these are uh, the joints for our asset. We have a root, we have that core, we have the dome, uh, the target. Here's the barrel root that I added that we're going to modify. Um, and this is fine, but we don't have any inputs or outputs. We're not doing anything with any of these nodes. Um, so none of the parameters are promoted. And the result of anything going on here isn't being sent out uh, into our rig. So we could also, if we had, let's say we selected these four and we wanted to update their rest transforms from some other skeleton, we could click this and it would give us another operator chooser. Uh, but we don't want to do that. But we could add a set point transforms. So if we selected all of these nodes and said add set point transform, it will add a set point transform node and it will wire those all in. But again, we don't have an input or an output. Um, so Many of these scripts are sort of prototypey things, um, and I expect some of these to go away uh, in the future. They're not super useful um, because oftentimes you will have built a rig already, or at least a skeleton, uh, and perhaps added some functionality. Uh, and so having these here isn't going to be very common uh, to use them. But that's the edit graph. So if we look back at our rig with an edit graph, we can now see that we can do whatever we want. So what kinds of things that we want to do here? Well, we want to add uh, transform objects. We want to wire things together. We want to create rig logic. And that rig logic is stored as geometry. And then it is invoked uh, with the scene animate. So one thing to note about all of this, it seems like there's lots and lots of nodes that are doing very specific things. 
Um, and that's extremely important. One of the reasons that Apex can be so efficient and fast is that it's a very explicit way of doing things. Unlike SOPs, which is very forgiving, Apex isn't forgiving at all. If I wanted to add, let's do this in our edit graph here, get rid of these ones. If I wanted to, uh, let's say, add two numbers together, which is something that I can do in uh, Apex, I hit tab because I want to add a number. Well, I'm confronted with literally hundreds of nodes. If I go to the all, you can see there's really just an overwhelming number of nodes. But what you'll also notice is that many of the nodes seem to be duplicates. Uh, for instance, where was it? Right. There's a whole bunch of multiply nodes. There's at least 20, 25 null nodes. So why are there all these different nodes? A null is a null. A, a multiply is a multiply, isn't it? Well, in SOPs, that tends to be the case. But Apex wants you to be very specific. If you're multiplying, it wants to know what you're multiplying. Are you multiplying a float and an int? Or just floats? Or an int and a float? Or just ints? So we can show an example of that. If I just put down a value, well, again, what kind of value do I want? And in this case, I want an integer. There we go. So you can see that it has an, an input, so I could um, have some sort of number coming in, or I can hit P on the keyboard. Now I have uh, a value that I can add. So I can put a 10 in here, let's just say. And that 10 will be this value. Maybe I add another one and I'll put, I don't know, 20 in here. So now I have a 10 and a 20 and I can multiply them together. But again, Apex wants to know what kind of multiplication am I doing? I'm not doing vector three with a float. I'm doing integer multiplication. So I can take those two integers, A and B, and now the result of that is going to be integer multiplication between this integer and this integer. And this is where the speed and, and efficiency comes uh, for Apex. So don't be intimidated by this gigantic list of things um, because the things that you will be doing in the graph are going to be very specific. And so you'll be using very specific nodes like multiply integer. And if you're multiplying floats, you'll be using multiply float.